you have to ask yourself, am I creating a God in my own image? Right. You know, and, and, I, and I, I say that just to, to get, leave you something to think about, right? Like, hey, am I creating a God in my own image, you know, where I get to dictate, you know, how sin will be paid for or if sin has to be paid for? So um, we're Christians, we go around and we talk to people about faith, God, Christ. Um, is there any one particular in particular that you want to get into or any topic in particular that you want to talk about concerning faith or God or death? Hmm. Anything like that? I've been thinking a lot of the historical aspect, a lot about the historical aspect recently. Okay. Uh, and especially like where it all started within Rome and how it spread and when it was adopted and how that changed things and the, the standardization of it as it became part of the state rather than just being something that people believed in spite of the state. Sure. And so I was wondering if you knew anything about that. Well, I can tell you this. Right from the very beginning, uh, as recorded in the book of Acts, we know that the disciples went and proclaimed Christ and they overturned Jerusalem. There are quotes about how they flipped the world upside down. And I, I do this because it comes from scripture. So certainly the message had power in and of itself to change lives and people were believing it like it spread like wildfires, people would believe it. Um, and then throughout history, it has grown. Of course, there are parts where uh, Rome, for example, standardized it, and then it became, it had an avenue in which to expand. And then the next one that I would put out is the Gutenberg Press at the time of the Reformation, which allowed the Bible to be printed and then it spread out more from there. And then now we have technology, we have the internet, for example, where it spreads out even further, right? So the message has constantly been growing and spreading. Um, but more importantly, why? Why has that been growing that way? Is it just because some guy standardized it for a government? No, it's changing lives before that. Changed people's lives in the midst of that. Was it just because these guys during the time of the Reformation were just rebelling against the Roman Catholic Church? Is that why it had power? No, men were giving up their lives being burnt at the stake for what they believed in the gospel. And then nowadays that even continues. People go on missions trips overseas to proclaim the gospel to people who don't have the internet, who don't have access to the written word, so that they can believe in Christ. So all that to say, Christianity has progressed throughout history. The word has advanced throughout history. But why? Why is Christ so transformative in history? What do you think? Why do I think that Christ has spread so much throughout history? Um, I don't know, that's, that's an interesting question, and it has a lot of uh, stuff about, if we look at like modern day as well, there's the fact that over in the East, so like, you know, America, for example, uh, I believe the amount of Christians is declining, yet over in, or sorry, did I say the East? I meant the West. America is the West. <laughs> uh, the amount of Christians has been declining, but in the East, it's been booming, which is really interesting, uh, especially in, in like China, for example. I've, I've heard that there's been a lot of rapid increase in, in Christianity there, which is uh, something, in, uh, you know, observing the patterns of how it, it's, it spreads out. I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the message it spreads is, is very... I mean, there are people who are inflammatory about it, <laughs> people who seek arguments with it. But I think the message it's trying to spread is, is, very, is very positive, and it gives a lot of hope to people. Well, hold on a second. First, I want to get what you think that message is, and then I'm going to ask Brother Alex to explain the, mes the gospel message right. as we find it in Scripture. I think, so what do you think it is first? I think the message is that, um, I think the message is that th there is a God, right? who loves us and wants the best for us and he knows what the best for us is uh, and he's giving us the opportunity to follow him and do uh, those things that he knows is the best for us and as long as we choose to accept him we would uh, get you know be forgiven for our sins for the mistakes we make and we'd get to go to heaven and be with him that's how I see it. Those are some critical points, namely the forgiveness of our sins and to live with God. But I think we could flush that out a little more deeply. You want to take a stab at it? Yeah, brother? sure, sure. I definitely want to first start by reading uh, Romans 1.16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, 
the just shall live by faith. And so I, I begin there because I, I believe as we were talking about how has it spread, I think it clearly is seen here in Romans 1.16 that the gospel is the power unto salvation. That that is why it has spread. Why, why such a powerful message is the only message that can save somebody, right? Which is why we call it the good news, right? right? But before we explore the good news, which it seems like you know the good news, we have to also consider the bad news. And we want to definitely talk about that a little bit. And so the bad news is that we know you mentioned God. God is holy, right? And so he's perfect and righteous. And so what does he demand from us? Well, the scripture says, be holy as I am holy. Well, there's a problem there because we're not holy, right? We're sinful people. We've all, the Bible says, have fallen short of the glory of God. There's no one good, not even one. But yet often we ask ourselves or ask others, hey, do you think you're a good person? What would you say if I were to say, hey, do you think you're a good person? I would say that I try to be a good person, but I know that I make a lot of mistakes. Um, and I think that goes for pretty much everyone. I think everyone makes a lot of mistakes. Yes. And I think it's, I, yeah, and so I think being a good person is more so about making the effort and striving for that than, than, than um, the specific actions, mm -hmm. right? We're going we're gonna to do a little test, just a few brief questions that I'll ask you that will help us understand why we're not good people. And as you answer these, I just ask that you answer them honestly, but also know that Jacob and I also are with you in that we too have fallen short of the glory of God, right? And so the first question would be, which comes from the Ten Commandments is, you know, have you ever told a lie? Yes. <laughs> right? We all have, right? Yeah. And so what, what does that make us when we lie? Well, uh, it makes it, it makes it so that we're um, we're in, in a way manipulating another person's reality yes. right they have an idea of, of, of the world and what is true and we're shifting that and altering it to something that is false which is cruel right yes. it's depriving them of, of something that I personally think we all have a right to which is the truth it's the truth amen and so that makes us liars right yeah and then as we continue through a few more of the Ten Commandments have you ever stolen something, even if it was small? Yes. Yeah, so have we. And so what does that make us? That makes us it's thieves, thieves yeah. right? Yeah. And so we're liars, we're thieves. And then have you ever lusted after you know, a woman? Yes. So have we. And so Jesus said, if you've ever committed lust, even if it was in your heart, you've committed adultery. And so that makes us adulterers. And so as we can see, just based on just three of the Ten Commandments, we are guilty, right? If today, if we were to die today, if you were to die today, and would you would you be innocent or guilty? Well, um, well, you know, assuming that we go by the by the uh, things proposed in the Bible, I'd be definitely guilty. <laughs> yes, appreciate your honesty. Yes, thank you for for being honest. And so, that's the bad news, right? Yes. Right, but it seems like you know what did God do for guilty sinners, so that we can be with him in heaven yeah i yeah and it's it's i think this is probably the best time to bring it up i'm actually agnostic i'm not a christian i was raised in a christian household so i do know that of the good news and of the bad news which is that jesus died so that despite our failures we can be forgiven right mm -hmm. yes and but you know for me it's not so much a question of is god in the it, you know, really looking out for us or something, right? Because if, if the Christian God is real, then I know for sure that there, there, you know, the good news is there and, and, and I would want to follow that. But my, the thing that I have not yet been able to settle is if God truly exists. I'm currently undecided in that. You want to take a look yeah. at that? Well, I'm going to say this bluntly, so that comes with force, but I want you to know that I'm not hating on you. Yes. <laughs> okay? The Bible would call you a fool. <laughs> and here's why. Right. The fool suppresses the reality of God. We all know that God is real. He's self-evident in creation. In the same way that you and I can look at that bench and know, that didn't just come together on its own. Somebody made that. It's intelligent design there. And in the same way that we can look at that car and think, that didn't just happen by accident. It was designed, right? In the same way that we look at creation or these things, we can see that there's design that is evident. And so there's a designer. 
right? So we all know that God exists. And moreover, God has made his attributes, his power and divine nature clearly perceivable. We know what he's like by virtue of what we see in nature, right? So God is self-evident to us. Now that begs the question, how do we know that it's God, the Christian God, the God of the Bible, okay? Yes, that is, yeah. So okay. I say, I think that God probably exists, but that's exactly what I was. You go to Christ. No one else is worthy of your trust. He came back from the dead as a vindication of the claims that he made and the fact that he is the son of God. And therefore what he taught is the truth of God. You go to any other religious leader, any other philosophical teacher, they're dead. They stayed dead. Christ stands alone, alive and unique. He's the one that you should believe. Which is why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm -hmm. and so Christianity is very inclusive in that it doesn't matter if you're poor, it doesn't matter if you're rich, it doesn't matter you know, your skin color, none of that matters, yeah. right? Christ is for all. But it's very exclusive in that it is only through Christ alone. And if you consider, you seem like a very intellectual person, if you consider all world religions, right? Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, uh, they all believe in a workspace salvation. That you have to earn your way to God. That if you do more good things than bad things, then hopefully you will go to heaven. Yes. You will enter God's presence. Christianity stands alone in that it says it's not by works. It's by His grace alone, by faith alone, in Christ alone. Right? Amen. Which is why Jesus said, it is finished. Why do you think he said that? Why do you think those, those were some of his last words on the cross? It is finished? Mm -hmm. Well, he's talking about how, um, I suppose, the, you know, his role on this earth has been completed. He had, uh, you know, by dying, he has forgiven the sins of the people. Uh, and paid, paid for them. Yeah, yeah. Or, well, sorry, yes, paid for the sins of the people. You're right. I, I got that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and through his payment, we can be forgiven. That is, yeah. Right. I just skipped a few steps there. Yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> it's, it's good. Yeah, and I think that's what he meant by that. Um, and it, it, the the way he talks throughout the Bible, right, uh, is is really interesting, and it brings a lot of. Um, questions up because I agree that Jesus is, is definitely unique compared to all the other all the other historic his, you know religions and things yeah. that because right for example we know that um, you know Buddhism the the um, the original Buddha like like he was a person who lived right and just that we know that Jesus was a person who lived yet hypothetically they're mutually exclusive and so it's 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 more of a question of who was really you know speaking the truth and who really did the things that they is, is said they did um, and it's interesting because Jesus has a is, has a um, sort of consistency about uh, I guess if you look at it from a, a storytelling perspective right um, he does a lot of what you could say is foreshadowing <laughs> right and he hints at a lot of things uh, that that shows a deeper level there and Mm -hmm. And and it, and it, and it and to put it in the words of C.S. Lewis, it forces us to draw the conclusion, really, if you accept the Bible as at least mostly accurate to what Jesus said, uh, it, it forces us to draw the conclusion that Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or the Lord our God. You yeah. know, the famous quote. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's just something that I've been thinking about a lot. I haven't come to a definitive conclusion yet, though. See, yeah. I appreciate your honesty. Yeah. yeah. I wonder why you aren't convinced to flee to him, to run away from whatever direction you're going in now to him. And I wonder if maybe that reason is that you're not convinced of the gravity of your own sin. So what do you think about your own sin? That's what I want to dive into. How is it going to be paid for? Well, yeah, um, of course, it, it, you know, that's how is it going to be paid for? Well. In, in a way, that's a bit of a loaded question. Mm -hmm. It implies that it, uh, there is a sin that needs to be paid for. And I believe I've done bad things, but bad relative you know, to what idea of morality, because there's a lot of different ideas of morality that exist out there. And the one that 
you two believe in, I would presume, is, is that God laid down the laws for what is right and wrong, and that is absolute. Um, and then there's other religions that have other beliefs about what is absolute, uh, and I have my own understanding of what is absolute, and that understanding is separate from God at, right now, at the moment, purely because I don't believe in any specific religion. Um, and so, how is my sin going to be forgiven? Well, that, that depend, you know, that, that, that implies that there is a, a life after death. It implies that there is a judgment after death, and that if I have, you know, not abided by the law handed down, then I'm going to go to hell, which I don't know if that's necessarily the truth, but if it is true, then yeah, there's definitely no way I would be forgiven. And if it is true, then I would, the, the only available path is Jesus. Yeah. But I see. What, yeah, I don't know if it's true. Yeah, I would persuade you to believe that because Jesus is trustworthy and that's what he taught. One thing I'll add is just that also, I think something to leave you with, because I know you probably have to head to class soon, is that uh, yes, I do. <laughs> that you have okay. to ask yourself, am I creating a God in my own image? Right. You no, know, and, and I and I, I say that just to to get, leave you something to think about, right? Like, hey, am I creating a God in my own image, where I get to dictate what's morally right, what's morally wrong, uh, not right, and you know where I get to dictate, you know, how sin will be paid for, or if sin has to be paid for. Well. The scripture has to be your authority. The scripture has to be, it is the word of God, the living word of God, where you can know that it's absolutely true. And so that's my encouragement to you is that it seems like you're searching. It seems like you're, you have all these great questions. The best place where you're gonna find the answers to all of it is in scripture. And, and I, I can attest to you that the word of God can be trusted, that it has outlived thousands of years for a reason, for a purpose, and, and I hope that you can find uh, all the answers that you're looking for there, and, and that you can cry out to God for mercy and, and to forgive you for your sins. Just like you know, the Lord has had mercy on us and granted us repentance and, and salvation. So I yeah. hope we hope for that. Do you have any last questions for us? Um, I gotta get to class. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. Uh, Thank you again. Yeah, of course. That was fun. Yeah. Thank you and very much. I, I kind of sat and ran out of time. I wanted to bring up some other stuff. Yeah. Now, if you have more questions you want to get into, I'm happy to give you my phone number so we can talk again at a later point. Ball's in your court if you want to do that. Um, no worries either way. I, I, I think I'm just going to guess. Hey, well, it was great meeting you. What was your name again? Jonathan. Jonathan, nice to meet you, it was Alex. Nice to meet you too. Thank yeah. you for and your if time. If you see us again another day, I'd yeah. love to chat some more. Yes, yeah, of course. This is always great. Thank yeah. you very much. Have yeah. a good one. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a second to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel as well. Thanks and farewell, friends.